thanks for having us and thanks for coming. Uh, it certainly is a warm and nice, nice day. What we have planned to do today is that we have drawn a special selection of prints that are not in the exhibition. So I trust that you have seen the exhibition first. If not, go there after, after the talk. And what we'll show you today is a set of photos through which we uh, address certain themes related to Tove Jansson and her extraordinary life and, and work. Um, the majority part of the talking will be, of course, done by you, C.J. Um And then Animaya Grant, who's a co-curator of the exhibition, is here to help to hold the prints and Very translating <laughs> in case some words are missing, let's say. So that's, that's a role, role play here here today. And I thought that it might be the best way to start, so that we would start from you, CG, about how you ended up being a photographer. What was the crucial point? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so far away. It was about the beginning of the 60s. Uh, I saw a picture, was it uh, some kind of Fellini picture. It was black and white, it was eight and a half or something like that. And I, I like black and white pictures. And, and what, what the best in the Fellini's film, when you can stop the picture and see it, it it's a still a photo. I think that's a better than a, 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 the whole film. The still photo is going in your mind and it's, it belongs in your mind a very long, very long time. But the film is going like this. You see the film and then you forget it. But the still film photos, is you, you just, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's more than the film. But only one picture can be more than the one film. So that was the decision moment. And then yeah. you decided that that's it. Uh, and, and I went over, because in, in Helsinki we hadn't a, a photo school. But in Stockholm, uh, it was a photo school just began. It was a famous, uh, nowadays famous Swedish photographer, Christer Strömholm. And, uh, and he, he started, the, the photo school was only 10 years, but uh, it came as a lot of good pho photographer, Swedish and Finnish and from Germany and Norway and England and so on. And it was a uh, three years uh, photo school from nine to five o'clock. But we had one, one thing that, uh, in the school we must see about three films every week and discuss about the films. <laughs> and of course discuss about uh, still photos too. But we have all, all, all of this, three films every week. And then we, have, uh, we must uh, criticize the film. And, um, and the photo school was, the, it was a, on the practical school. You, have, you had a one hour to take the picture, say the first winter day, and one hour and after that, you have one hour to sell the pictures. And you got, we got the points. If you sell the picture, you got 25 points. If you got the picture ready under, under an hour, we got 25 points. And, and, and the biggest newspaper in Stockholm was Dagens Nyheta. If you could sell the picture the first winter day into Dagens Nyheta, you got 50 points. <laughs> <laughs> and some money, of course, too. And it, 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 was, it, 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 it was a good for practice that you must learn to sell the picture what you are taking. Hmm. And earlier when we have been, of course, we have been discussing, discussing uh, the theme quite a bit together during these two years we have been pre preparing the exhibition. You once mentioned that you, you did all sorts of photos, of course, during those study years. But one of the pay favorite topics of yours was hmm. photographing people. Would you tell yeah. a little bit about, about that? Yeah, in the, the Stockman School was also because the uh, headmaster, 
Christus somehow. He, he, he was taking photos of robust people, but he was taking picture of travesties, gays, lesbian, and what they call a backyard photos. And the Swedish press was called as the backyard photographers. <laughs> but of course, they mean backyard in your mind, in somehow the, the person who was never moving in sun, sunlight, always when it was dark. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had we had uh, was taking picture of the black people, actress, actors, uh, different kind of people, writers, authors, they write directors, and and from that 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 came the that you are um, taking still still photos of people. And what we have here, we have a wonderful still photo of two, two persons, lovely persons. And this is from the encounter from 1966 when you first met Tove. Isn't that so? Yes, we first met in Tove. That's where we have in Finland uh, the 6th of December, of the Independent Day. And it's a big party. It's, uh, the president invites you to the castle, about 2,000 people. And uh, it's a, it's a gr great ball. This is a director who was one of the famous person, director, the director Vivica Bandler. And they were working together about 50 years or something like that. She, wo she was directing the first uh, m movies and, and all that by Bandler. She came, came uh, director for the Stockholm uh, City Theater. She was about six years old. Yeah. She, she was a tough lady. <laughs> <laughs> Tove was a tough too, but, but very, but she was humble too. But she got through the things through because it was humble and so on. And then to say, of course, too bad, of course, you don't need to, to speak. You, you get it, you got it, you got it. <laughs> so, once you met her at this fantastic party in December 66, so what happened after that? How, do you, how, did, you, how did your friendship start? Uh, the first, uh, I, we went to dance under mm. the <laughs> crystal <laughs> candles and so on. And uh, you, you see, the ladies ha who are alone, you're allowed to go and uh, ask for a dance. Just mm. for a dance, yes. Mm. <laughs> uh, I, I, and it's a big ball, ball. It's about, well, it's just a thousand people dancing around. <laughs> and it's uh, very crowded. And. Uh, I think I got the French at that time, that 66. Mm. And after that, I saw in, in a different exhibition and so on. And, but it was when, when it, many years it before, what well, was 74 or something like that. Mm. And then you followed her life in different settings. Let's take the sec following photo, which is from a completely different era. And this is from 1992, when you did some of the shoots in the studio. Yeah, the, the studio and so on. It's just, uh, the studio was the, the studio and, and, and uh, the home. And they call it uh, Tower, Tower, Towers Atelier. Mm -hmm. it was, it was, uh, it's a big, it was quite big, big uh, studio. It was six meters high and about, uh, that was Satan Elias. 100 square meters. The, the room. Mm. Mm. And usually there, there's a the cube. There were wet and so on. And the moon is there made by 
a girlfriend to Ricky Pietila. So and there you, she is with the beloved you, character. She, yeah. she didn't show the pink paint, painters at all. She, she, she always like the artists are there. They don't show the paintings there, turning them around. Mm. And here it's probably worth mentioning that, of course, majority part of people, they know Tuva Janssen as creator or mother, if you like, of movements. But she was also a wonderfully talented author uh, and a painter. And therefore, as you were referring to the paintings of the studio, the studio space was actually used in many different ways for drawing the cartoons, for painting the lovely paintings, for, for writing the stories, etc. And even corresponding with the, with the, with the fans, because she actually replied to every single letter that was sent to her, which is quite extraordinary. Yeah, the letters, she got about 2,500 letters per year, and she always answered her hand, writing her hand for, for the child, for her or he. They were about from 8 to 14, 15, and she was uh, Arne was an archi. Well, A4 size of piece of paper? Writing uh, mm. A4 paper. One page, two pages, three pages, or five pages to the child, to who or she. She called it a small letter, but they were <laughs> big letters. <laughs> <laughs> but this is now an example of those photos that you took during the years following her life in the studio. And another theme that we have in today's discussion is, of course, the island. And we start, if we take the following picture from here, this is a picture by the other artist of ours in the exhibition, Bar Olof Janssen, who is Tuve's brother. Uh, he sent his best regards for all of, all of you. He's 94, isn't it? 94 only, only, only 94. Only 94 <laughs> years old. And, and started <coughs> photographing Tuve uh, quite early on. Would you tell about this very picture because it's so special? Yes, it, well, this is taken uh, in the 40s. But the, the, she was building this for, uh, in, in, in the 30s. This is 43, taken 43, uh, under, under the Second War, and she was, she, she looks like a little bit depression. <laughs> so, but I call it. Handmade by Tuve. The cottage is about two meters, two by three meters. It's just just for one bed and, and uh, a table and a, a chair. And uh, the fisherman said that this, that's not going to stand up only one year after when it, the winter storms go going, sticking and flying, it's falling away. But it's, it was standing 25 years. <laughs> Quite a solid cottage then. <laughs> yes. During the lunch, we had wonderful discussion about the right to build on the islands, didn't we? And you described so well that what was the method of building a cottage in such a stony, deserted mm. island? And you said that no, they didn't ask for any permissions because the fishermen, the local fishermen, told that it's no use for asking authorities that is it okay to build a house because the reply would have been most probably no yes after 10 years no yes yes so what they did if i understood you yeah. right that they just built the cottages and then they put a little note on the local shop's billboard asking that does anyone have anything against our little cottage on the island <laughs> and, and then they said no <laughs> do it <laughs> and then uh, then and the last cottage was what she, she, she was built that she did it ask and uh, because the, she just built up the, and then she asked again the village and put the small note do you mind? I have a cottage at the Haro, Club Haro. And they have about 50 names. 
we don't mind. Mm. And the island theme, you can put the photo down, I think, for a while. Um, the island theme is particularly important for Tove Janssen, because islands had, and this particular island, they had a central role, because she needed the space, yeah. quiet, isolation, all that. I think we should discuss a little bit about the character of the islands and, and the mm. character of the Baltic Sea because I guess not everyone in the room has experienced that. It might be worth talking about that a little bit. This is a very nice and summerish photo where the sea is showing its best side, but in reality it was not quite so, so often, or was it? No, no, she, but she called the island, uh, Lila is a lonely island in the middle of the Baltic Sea and she built a small cottage on a, on a lonely island, in the middle of the Baltic Sea. She liked to, oh, she was very uh, lonely somehow. She had a girlfriend, so but it, uh, uh, that's a very very calm and so uh, photo. But she like she liked the storm, thunderstorm. And storm. When it's storming, she went out on the sea. <laughs> well, that's <And> dangerous. <laughs> no, she liked the dangerous life. But she, she, she was like a, a, a father. The father, when it's like this, he hates this kind of weather. When it's calm and warm, a storm, raining and thunderstorm. <laughs> then out. <laughs> I, I guess they both had appreciated last night thunderstorm <laughs> then, you know, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, that I was quite an experience. That was a good one, yes. But they must be on the sea. Mm. Uh, the waves are going higher. And higher. So it's the, it's the wind, it's the, storm. the sea, the storm, all those elements that are yeah, crucial. You see, the, the, these pictures, that they are too calm and <laughs> to to postcard like this. Card. So this is quite a recent one because you have been returning to the island even after Tuve's death, and you said that you have spent there several weeks, one week okay. at a time. Uh, this is now a photo from 2013. Uh, if I read right yeah, from the uh, back of the, the sun is uh, the sun is coming up, but mm. we have the sun sun on the rocks and so on. So what is your experience of the island? It's, of course, it's, it's no trees on the island. You must bring the border and the trees for the, the sauna boots and all, all this. Firewood, I think. Fire yeah. boots, fire boots, and, and this is, uh, so she was calling it lagoon, and it's uh, the mirror for the cottage the clouds and the birds. You see, it's a mirror. Mm. <laughs> and now, you, you don't see the, the you don't see the, the bird, but you have the cloud and the cottage over there, yeah, and the rocks. Yeah, it certainly is an exceptionally calm day. Yes, and in, in the morning. But when, when it's storming and so on, there were some weeks that they could couldn't go out or pick up the, the, the dicky water or the fire boots and so on. They order uh, the coast guards mm -hmm. and the coast guard came with the helicopter with the boots and the drinking water and so on. And I think that's a very important thing to understand. The next photo actually tells a little bit about the transportation methods. This is um, Bar Ulov Janssen's photo from 74, where Tuve and, just make sure that everybody yeah. sees that, so where Tuve and Tulik get together with, you might know who else is in the boat. That's, that's uh, Lars, his yes. uh, middle son, so, uh, uh, brother. To you his brother. Yeah, and you, you bring the water can is over here, and boots and all this, and, and this was, they both, this was, was four and a half meter long. 
and maybe one meter ten centimeter wide, and a small a small motor was about was it nine horsepower. But really, you, you could it, uh, and the motor, the, the tulik is over here, tulik pietula, uh, and. Uh, she was taking care of the, all the menarchic men about the motors and, and all this uh, technical thing. Tu wasn't a tec uh, technical person. She, was, she, she had a pen and that's it. <laughs> she, she, were, she was a philosoph thinker. thinker. And the Tulek was the practical. Mm. Taking care of the boat and the motors and all, all this. Once you told me that even though the island was it was a kind of a peaceful quietness and isolation uh, for these Nei. for Tuve and Tulik a place to contemplate, to concentrate on the work, etc. So they received enormous amounts of guests. Yes, they, 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 you 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 allowed in, in Finland itself uh, can always come ashore and and who should be the Canadian Tatans? Everyone's right. Everyone's right, yes. And come and hello. It's tea for radio, coffee radio, or something like that. <laughs> and a lot of, lot of people that came, came and, and of course, it's, it, it was after this island, you have just border, and the next country is, is Estland, Estonia. Mm. So there were big parties organized, and there were invited guests and also uninvited guests. Yes, <laughs> a lot of un uninvited. <laughs> you were very invited if you, if you were drinking water and boots for the sauna, chopping boots and all that. But Tuva was, she liked, liked to, oh, she loved to chop the boots and the, so, so the saw boots, the woods, yeah. saw the, the woods and so on. And, uh, but she, she, loved, well, she loved to shop, chop boots. <laughs> and then one of the stories you once told, which I particularly remember, is that at times when the uninvited ca guests came to the island, and she did not particularly like that, mm. she escaped the cottage mm. and started carrying stones. Yes, she started and to carrying stones and so on. That was kind and of and an anger management. Stones, painting <laughs> stones. Stones or something, and doing something all the time. And, and mm. She didn't look up. Or <laughs> <laughs> then we just quickly show you a couple of photos uh, about the nature. This is also from 2013. This is the yeah, she, she was She was 28 summers on this island, from about five months. All over. Uh, five months from April to sep September, and in April it was usually it's uh, uh, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, um, uh, so I, he was um, ice stove still mm. frozen over. Sorry. Yes. Mm. <laughs> but just to demonstrate that uh, nothing really grew on the island. That's that's that. Toi hankuri hän on ex librix sama hankuri. So you said that this particular anchor is the same which is in her ex libris, which she of course designed herself. So a very particular piece in that sense. But really to understand the I you know, the life on the island, that yes, you had the weather conditions. You were on the mercy of the weather. At the very beginning there were no means to communicate with e anybody. And Perula, Tuve's brother, told me on Monday when I talked with him on the telephone that in the very beginning they had this sort of emergency plan that Perula, who was on the other island, would take his binoculars every evening at 6 o'clock yes. to check that that is everything okay on the other island. And the waste way for Tuve and Tuulikki to signal that no, something terrible is ha happening, is uh, to, to install a white sheet 
uh, on the outer wall of the cottage. And then Barulov said that the sheet was never needed, though, which was kind of a relief to hear. And they, later on, when the technology developed, they got walkie-talkies and, and so on. Yeah. And could communicate big, with the big ghost. Big walkie-talkies. <laughs> The island has also become uh, a re destination, a resort for Tuve fans from all over the world. You can't really see that, but I can, I can guarantee you that there are lots of people around the cottage, and this yes, is... They, they, are, they are on the picnic around the cottage. Mm. It's, about, it's about 12 or 50 people there. They're coming and they have the picnic and going around the island and they have a guy who's telling about the, about the island and Tove. But you can see it's a, I call it, it's a, it's a rocky, brutal island. Well, you can imagine when it, the storm is blowing and, and you can't be, uh, you can't go out before because the storm is so heavy. And the cottage is only uh, 30 square meters, so relatively small. Yeah, it's, it's, mm. it's a one, one room, and uh, you can lattialukus mene alas. Ah, okay, what is lattialuku in English? Like a la you know when you have a ledge in the floor. So you can I mean, sort of lift it. Yes, that's, yeah. that's it. <laughs> yeah, and from there you could go straight to the Sauna. Oh and the sauna was down, 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 down in the basement. Now, we have, right before this, this talk, we actually discussed with one member of the audience who is going to travel to the island. Eva, would you like to tell us a little bit about your forthcoming journey? Well, providing the weather conditions are good, um, I'm going to go with my mom on the 10th of August. And it's very, very complicated. It's actually quite expensive, but not Can you hear? because mm. we haven't got a car and we can't get there. So anyway, uh, the island belongs, I think, to a society of trust now. Mm. And, link. Mm. But this year, for two weeks, it's going to be open to the public. Uh, so I think the information place in Hope, the nearest biggest town, is organizing. Uh, so I bought two seats, well, two places on the boat. Um, and from Polvo, which is, I don't know, about 50 kilometers from Helsinki, we'll have to get a taxi to go, um, well, across the land and then over a big bridge uh, to another biggish island. And from there, there's a cafe, Benitas, from where the boat will go to the island. And the whole trip should last two hours, so <laughs> I have no idea how many people, well, how many people are going, but all the places are taken, and um, so obviously it will depend on the weather. I'm hoping we'll be able to have a look. Yeah, I'm sure that everybody in the room keeps fingers can. crossed that you have good weather. You can, you can, you can take a cheap hel hel helicopter go over. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, that certainly is a wonderful story and, and tells about the motivation. Um, and you had to share the experience with us after you have uh, been there. I think I'll be showing up. <laughs> that, that's that's uh, the sunrise when you're going to see if you, if you hit the island, well, the sunrise. Well, should be there between 2 o'clock and... No, that, that, this is about 5 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Okay. The, 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 because the air is very clean and, and the, I mean, the ilmas is good, but it's also very crisp. Crisp. Mm, fresh, the air is very uh, crisp. Mm. Fresh. 
Siis näin, ei, 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 niin täällä kosteus ei ole koskaan täällä siellä. Mm, it's not that humid as it is for instance now here in London. Always. Yeah, it's dry and crisp. It's different. Mm. And it's coming up from the east and the east for us is, uh, is uh, Russia. Mm. And if you read, and when you read Tuve's novels and short stories, they are island related, almost all of them. And it's also probably worth mentioning that the last book she wrote, and the book that was illustrated by Tuulikki Pietila, her life companion that was published in 1996, it was about the island. And one copy of the book is in the exhibition as we speak. So it certainly played a very, very important role in their lives. And at some moment they decided that it becomes a bit too dangerous to live there, yeah. so they left the island. Yes, um, she left the island when she was 78. And she, she had already a stick to go and so on. It's, it's very hard to, to uh, jump from a rock to the other one, and so on, from the stone to the stone. But she told that that for he she had the feet on the rock on the island and the head in the heaven. Mm. Now we move on from the island mm. to city of Helsinki to a park yeah, that, that was very special for her. They call uh, now nowadays uh, Tove Jansson's Park. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a below uh, a ra a Russian church is there, but uh, this is a park where she spent her childhood and, and all this. And um, you see, this Tove was she she had a. That's only a four for you. She had a little sort of nature path inside she had a, the a, 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 park. A, yeah, but. In, in the life too, she had her own own boat. A path. Mm. She took her own path in everything yeah. she did. She, uh, and why did you end up choosing? Um, I mean, this is from 1991, and you have a whole series of photos from the park. Yeah, she loved the park, uh, because the park was uh, uh, about 50 meters from, from, from the park where she was living, that was childhood. Childhood's uh, asunto. Home, childhood. Uh, home, home. And uh, <coughs> because of that, she, 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 she loved the park because she was living uh, in that, that year over 20 years. Mm. And it's a very special part of the city. It's called, the, the part of the city is called Katajanokka, and it's a uh, it was built uh, during the turn of the century. Before that, it used to be one of the most dangerous parts of the Hel city of Helsinki, where all the criminals and fishermen lived in l little wooden sheds. And towards the, the end of the uh, 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, it was built with fantastic Jugendstil buildings. And it's still to be a day, probably one of the most beautiful parts of the part of the city and that's where she lived when she was a yeah. child. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We call it a Jugend, Jugend area. What, mm. what you call it uh, Art, Ar Ar Art Nouveau mm. style of the, the houses. Uh, you mentioned that Tuve used to share lots of stories with you about her childhood. And as you probably know, she was uh, she was born to an artist family. Her father was Victor Janssen, a sculptor. Her mother, a Swedish artist. Um, and then she had two brothers. And everything in the family was linked to the arts in one way or another. They even had the monkey, didn't they? They did have the monkey too, yes. Uh, and the two was very jealous because the father was playing with the monkey and, and gave all, all the kind of uh, I mean, candies and so on to the monkey, but not to the tube. No. <laughs> and play more with the monkey than with the tube. 
Mm. And so she was jealous of that. Maybe she. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this, the, the following photo is from Dover's studio in 1992. And there you can actually see um, Dover's father's sculptures, don't yeah, you? Yeah, she, she, he did a lot, a lot of sculptures. A lot of sculptures is in Helsinki and around, around Finland. But he had a lot of sculptures. Yeah, he made lots of monuments after the Second World War yeah. that were commissioned works uh, for different you know, graveyards in different parts of you know Finland. So, but yes, that's a that's a wonderful wonderful studio picture. And another one, sort of bringing us back to the little friends, <laughs> is yeah. here. Yeah, the, somehow well, this is two best shoe, shoes, these red ones, <laughs> this childhood. And she, she was uh, the father was a uh, heavy fisher, fisherman, but, uh, but Tuva likes to fish too. But it's always where Onki Um Fishing uh, rod, mm. like an old fashioned uh, fishing rod with a uh, worm. And every day there was. They had also uh, sort of nets for fish, and um, it was a fish chest, which um, some, some, some. Yeah, they, they, it was like the everyday thing. That's what they ate on the island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and even I the moomins were fishing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Adventures. Uh, but when I when I'm visiting. Tuves studio and so on, atelier, so I never got the smell of food at her home, never, <laughs> she because uh, I never saw him eating, uh, or, eating or, or, that, or, or that, but what she offered me was always, she, she was asking me, are you taking a coffee, whiskey, whiskey or coffee, are you taking a devil whiskey, <laughs> devil whiskey means that uh, it was whiskey like this and border like this. That was a double whiskey. <laughs> it was with the border. Mm. And it, it was uh, always, we met always between 11 and 2 o'clock. After 2 o'clock, she, she went to have a two hour siesta. And but you certainly had been one of the rare trusted ones who was allowed to get so close to Tuve. Because as I have learned, she did not particularly like to be photographed. No, that's, yes, that's true, but maybe. We were drinking first, as any tick for Before you share all the secrets with us, so uh, two more photos. This is from a very special event from a city of Tampere, which is uh, about two hours by train from Helsinki. Um, what do you tell about the, the festivities around? Yes, uh, she, she's had an 80 years uh, anniversary in Tampere. And then they had a seminar. This is a city hall in Tampere. And this, this is, for me, this is a picture that she's going to say. She said goodbye to the me media, to the journalists, and all that. Uh, fuck, fuck them all. <laughs> The, after that, she did, didn't uh, uh, give them any, any interviews and so on anymore. And that, that was the time she she got uh, that the doc doctor told her that she has a cancer. She was smoking seventy years, seven oh. Mm. Started when she, she was fifteen. Mm. <laughs> but she certainly enjoyed life. Yes, she, she, she did that. <laughs> she like I mean, she like she like men and she like uh, women. Mm. The last picture we have for you 
Uh, it's a picture that includes a question, which is very important in life in general. Yeah, this is uh, this is one of my last pictures of her, and she's asking me, "Are you happy now?" You can always ask her, "Are, are you happy now?" You, you, or you? Are you happy now? I don't know. But I think we, we leave this with a, with a wonderful, important question, because happiness in general, it's all about enjoying life. It's about understanding, understanding the world around us, appreciating the other people, etc., etc. So many core values, so many important things. And thinking how much he gave for us, I think that's also something to be appreciated. Wasn't her motto love and work? Yeah, no, this, this is a typical way she's looking at in the camera, like the children are looking at the camera. Oh, They're okay. going close, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a wonderful photo. Uh, and that's where we want to leave this little presentation, but please do ask. We have a little bit of time for your questions or comments or your experiences. If you have met her, if you have uh, been to Finland, if you have anything, see she is now here and it's your chance. So you have a question. I'd like to ask you, what quality, what quality did you like most about Tove? Mm -hmm. Tove. Sorry, my pronunciation is terrible. What quality what, what did, did you, you like most? about her most? Um, I don't know. Was it the Just anger or the... No, the she, she, somehow she... she, she it's it's so open-minded uh, and tolerant. And yeah, and yeah. then she... she and I don't know if you can allow it to other people. She allowed, gave people space, space. and listened to other people and... Yeah. Ke, you know, consider this, consider yes. it. Yes. Thank you. Hmm. Any other questions? What, what age was she when she moved to the island? When she moved to the island? Well, that's a story in several steps, really. She, 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 she was only from, from, from the childhood, from the 20s, 1920. She was on a different kind of islands, yeah. but all, almost in the same area. But this island, this was the, the, the <coughs> one that she loved most, most because she wanted want to go away from the people and all this, but she didn't. <laughs> they came over to her. Mm. Mm. And this was in the early 60s when she oh, moved yeah. to the island. This Bukharo was the beginning 60s, but she was every summer living in, in some cottage. And they always rent the cottage they didn't mm. own mm. because they didn't own this. This cottage, either they just built a cottage. They didn't ask any permission or something like that. The cottage was ready, and after that, she died. She gave it to the Kunale. The community, the council. Yeah. Mm. Any? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to share my personal Julie Janssen experience. I'm American, but I, yeah. I grew up reading movement stories in a little town an hour from New York City and I was so fascinated by the atmosphere of Finland and, and autumn and mystery and, and the stories all had a wonderful she conveyed a, a, a world that I found very magical and then when I was a young adult I moved to Finland for 10 years uh -huh. wow. but I, I ended summers on an island near mm -hmm. near her island. And I, I just have this personal connection which I'm sharing with everyone in, in this room because I, I think and the books for adults are equally magical, but there's there's something about what she created which I think so many people have responded to. And, mm -hmm. and I, it's just a pleasure, say to mm -hmm. hear your experiences and, and to learn more about her life because I think there must be many people around the world we feel we have a personal connection. Mm. You see a little cottage. It, uh, it was always open. It's open the, the year around. Because the, she 
never locked the door. They had a, a big, it was a big key, a, a big key and, and uh, it was hanging just close to the door. And it, it was a sign, here, here is the key, don't, don't uh, smash the windows. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. I have a really detailed inquiry about the way that you work. You mentioned playfully but convincingly that you normally got a drunk before you started taking pictures. One thing <laughs> Once a time, I discovered <laughs> early on working as a photographer was extremely unkind to photograph people when they had a drink. Were you being straightforward that she was normally drunk when you photographed? No, no. She, I got more drunk. She, she was a heavy drinker. <laughs> <laughs> so she had the benefit of being slightly out of the way. No, we, used to be, we took the picture before, and then we started to take one drink or two. But he's a good storyteller, and it's all about <laughs> stories, isn't it? <laughs> uh, the the storyteller was too bad. I'm not a storyteller. <laughs> okay. I'm not right. She had her siesta after that. Did she work up until 11 o'clock then? She, she was working, but she was working very early. She went about 12 in the midnight to sleep, and she wake up about 5 o'clock in the morning. And then it, she worked to 11, and then they had a pause uh, with me or somebody else. <laughs> or, 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 and then she worked uh, in the afternoon too. Yeah. Hmm. That's something to think about. <laughs> but yes, thank you for the questions. It's, it's certainly lovely that you all came, came today. We all appreciate that a lot. And thank you, CG, for being here with us thank today. You. And thank you for the wonderful... I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs>